but the numbers game is an exciting way to set up a PE activity and especially good if you have large groups with more students. You can play this game for hockey, basketball, soccer, rugby, and it's a challenging way for students to work against each other 1v1, 2v2, and so on. You can play this activity for grade twos all the way through middle school up to high school as well. Let's check it out with the setup and gameplay. So for the numbers game, simply the aim is to be the first to the ball and score in the goal or the basket, whatever sport you're playing. So what you're gonna need is two goals or two nets or two hoops. Today we're gonna to be doing soccer. So you'd obviously need two soccer goals and then you need the equipment for it. So whether you're playing soccer, basketball or hockey, you need a little bit of equipment for each team. You also need markers to mark out the playing area. If you don't have markers, that's fine. You can use the sports court lines. And if you have them available, get some team vests so players know who's on their team because they're going to be coming on in different times. So to set up first off, put those goals out one at each end of the playing area and use the markers to mark out the sidelines and the end lines. You're going to divide the class into two teams and have each team line up at either end of the playing area. And here's the important thing. Now you need to give each player in the team a number. So if there are four players, there'd be numbers one to four. And if there's more players, there's of course more numbers. And lastly, put the soccer ball or whatever sport you're playing, put that ball in the middle. So everyone should know their numbers and then they're ready to go. To start the game, the teacher's got to call out a number. So for example, the teacher calls out the number three. Now, whoever is the number three from each team has to then quickly go and sprint all the way to the other team's goal, touch it, sprint back and touch their own goal, and then you can sprint into the middle and the players play on one versus one, playing a game of soccer, trying to dribble and tackle, and they keep playing until someone scores a goal. Once a goal is scored, the team that scored gets a point and everyone resets, we put the ball back in the middle and players are ready to run on again. So now the teacher calls another number one. Number one. So the number one players would run, go and touch both ends, and then they play on. So here we go, now the pink team scores a goal, they get a point. And you can keep playing round by round. You can do first team to five points is the winner, and then maybe the losing team has to do a challenge. So for example, they got to do 10 push-ups. So you can do a different fitness challenge as you like to make it competitive. Once everyone's had a good few goes at playing against each other one versus one, you can then progress it and you call out different number combinations and it becomes a two versus two, three versus three. So now players will come on in teams and then you're adding that teamwork element to it as well. So for example, the numbers one and three are called so numbers one and three would run on again. They've got to touch the other side's goal, come back, touch their own goal, and then play continues. And maybe the players have to pass. They have to work together to try and score a team goal this time. Now, what you can add in is certain rules. So for example, you can say before you're allowed to score, you have to pass at least four times. So here, this group of two passes four times and then you're able to score in the goal to get a point. So you can start to add in some specific rules so the kids just don't shoot straight away because you're trying to encourage teamwork. You can always adapt the game by changing the way that players come onto court. So for example, instead of touching the opposite goal, when their number's called, they have to run all the way around the outside and back to their original spot and then they can come on to play and try and score. Another way you can do it is if, if you have a large group, you can then make more teams. So you can have three or four teams and each team has their own goal to protect. And it becomes a one versus one versus one versus one. And it really sort of is a fun, adaptive way to play soccer or basketball or hockey. 
you can vary which sport is played. So if you want to do basketball, you of course do basketball with the basketball hoops. Again, players have to then run, touch the opposite hoop and then back to their own and then play on continues until someone scores a basket. Or you can do hockey. This time what you can do is you can put hockey sticks in the middle. So if you're doing one versus one, just have two sticks in the middle. Players can run without their sticks, do what they need to do, and then they run in, pick up the stick, and play continues. So of course, if you're quicker, you get the advantage. Thanks for watching Prime Coaching Sport with me. Hopefully you and your class enjoy the game today. Now, if you need more ideas, if you're a teacher who needs some inspiration, make sure you check out my lesson plans in the links below. There I've got tons of fitness circuits, sports specific units, individual challenges, stations, skills, drills, team games, loads of different stuff to help you as an elementary teacher to teach game-changing physical education at your school.